Welcome back, everyone. I've been speaking with Adewale Adeoye, Adekule Yusuf, and Babajide Koladi Otitoju. Gentlemen, let's move on quickly to our next discussion. A stable business climate is essential for securing foreign investment and boosting production. Africa's richest man and president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, is not happy with the business climate in Nigeria. Dangote has criticized the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, for its recent hike in interest rates to about 30%. He noted that the increase in the rates will make job creation more difficult and discourage growth of the manufacturing sector. Dangote called on the federal government to protect the interests of businesses in the country by creating a favorable em environment for them to thrive. Vicky, let me start with you. Okay, all right, let me start uh, with Adekule then. I mean, many uh, economists and concerned with the individuals have always been saying that using high interest rates to fight inflation will not work. Why did we have to wait for Dangote to say this? Well, I think um, he's a businessman. We should trust his experience. I think what he has said reflects the views of majority of um, stakeholders in the business realm. So I, I think I absolutely agree with him because no matter how good your policies are on paper, if they don't transform to prosperity of the people, if they don't transform to more industries, more jobs for Nigerians, people are losing their jobs, their purchasing power is weakened, they are demoralized, they, are, they don't have access to the essentials of life, they can't feed adequately, then it means your policies are not working. So we need pro, uh, policies that translate meaningfully, that transform the life of the people that makes them happier, that makes them to be prosperous. You know, if those policies don't do that, then there's no way uh, anyone can agree with uh, what the CBN is doing. A, prog a policy that works is the one that we can feel the impact positively. So I think I agree with what um, Dangote is saying, that um, we are finding it difficult to breathe and we need a more conducive environment, business environment for Nigerians to, uh, to, I mean, to have access to the basic things of life. Your take on this? I, I'm totally in support of what Dan Guti said. Those who wear the shoes, they know where uh, it pinches. Interest. You understand me? Uh, I know government wants economy to, you know, revamp. And the government wants economy to generate and create jobs and so many other things. But what the government does, most times, are antithetical to the about discoloration the you know the government wants. Madame Gouste said, nobody can create jobs with an interest rate of 30%. No growth will happen. An import-dependent economy <laughs> is a poverty. <laughs> so just, just be importing poverty because the jobs that should happen here, you are giving to other countries where you are importing from. So those who are obsessed with uh, textbook you know, theories, we need to listen, you know, to those who are in practice. And I've been do, done something for six months, close to a year, if it's not working. It's, there's nothing bad in thinking out of the box. The economy needs to improve. That's what the government wants. But what the government does sometimes doesn't align with that expectation. Mm. You had, I commit to Dangote because most of them, you can see it rarely talks. Most of them keep quiet, they don't talk, but now, for him to talk, at least the biggest uh, investor from this part of the world, he knows what he's saying, and uh, you can't say he's politicizing anything. Mm. It's not working, and we need to do something about it, and urgently too. Mm. So before we move on to what we need to do urgently, it's important for me to say that uh, BKO cannot continue with us on the program. I mean, he needs to attend to other, mm. other matters. So let's move on with this conversation. What ex if, if, if the monetary policies are not effective, yeah. where do we go from here? I mean, this conversation didn't start today. We've been talking about this for years. How do we move on from this is not working, this is what we should do? What is that thing that we need to do? You see, sometimes government takes decisions that are based on you know, the reality on the ground. What we have now that we have a situation where there's uh, inflation. And the government is trying to raise the interest rate to discourage people from borrowing. But when you have 
uh, an interest rate ceiling, then you are not being critical about the different sectors that are involved in, a, you know, in production. For instance, some people need to borrow money to invest in production. Some people need, want to borrow money to buy cars. Some people want to borrow money to import wine you know, and goodies for the rich. So there must be consideration for those who genuinely need loans in order to invest in production. Some things that will lead to more creation of wealth for our people. So I, I think that the Nigerian government needs to understand that they need to continue to, uh, to begin to think out, out of the box and to realize that the only way we can deal with our economy is to create more jobs. But when you are not encouraging people to invest in businesses, when the business, is not, uh, the business environment is not conducive, there is no way more people will not lose their jobs. And I think if you want to deal with the business aspect of any country, one of the things you need to address is energy. Mm. If you see what is going on now, the past two weeks, people don't have, there's no light anywhere. So what would be the impact of that? If you are talking about oil production, we have fallen from 1.7 to almost about 1.2. So people are paying high, you know, high amount of money to buy diesel to operate their businesses. Then electricity supply is almost nil. Even those that are in, uh, you know, grade A, they are complaining days, weeks, they don't have light. And in some areas, so, has declared uh, state yeah. Of so if you don't tackle the problem of uh, energy, that you are just joking. If you don't tackle energy, where people can, if you let's say we have about just 20 hours supply of electricity today in Nigeria, you'll be shocked about the transformation you are going to see in this country. For, the, for instance, people produce all sorts of things in, in ABBA, shoes, uh, all sorts of things. If you go to that place, if they, need to, if they know that they have to be spending so much money to get electricity supplied to them, the cost of their final products will be very expensive and most Nigerians will not be able to buy. They will be compelled to do inferior goods in order to be able to save some money. And when you are doing inferior goods, there's no way you can compare, can compete in the international market. So Nigerian government needs to solve the basic problems, and one of them is energy. The other one is security, and then transportation. Imagine when you are going here from here to Abuja. You know, let's say you are not going there, you don't have money to buy. You cannot, it's normally it's supposed to be about three hours. Let's say there's rail services. You want to move your goods from Lagos to Calabar. It's going to take you probably about four, four days if you are moving some imported goods. So transportation problems, energy problems, Security problems are fundamental problems that if the government fails to address these problems, we are just deceiving ourselves about uh, industrialization. All right, Adekun, it looks like uh, CBN is, I mean, trying to achieve price stability. But in doing all of this, is increased interest rates the only tool uh, available uh, to CBN? Certainly not. Mm. Problems can be solved in several ways. And that is why the CBN needs to listen to the uh, operators in the economy, the manufacturers. They are the real engine of the, in the economy. And when the Dangote speaks, honestly, we should listen. Because he knows what he's saying. He has seen it all, so to say. He gives several examples that Nigeria should nurture its industries, protect them, and that is what happens in other countries. Let me give you an example. Recently, the President Inubu, you know, was highly commended, you know, for removing taxes, VAT, everything from pharmaceutical products mm. and, and input. You saw that? Yes, absolutely. And when you look at it, read it very well. You know, look at what does the government want? The government wants the prices of medicines, everything around it, to come down heavily. And that will benefit every Nigerian. The health sector, we all need it. You get what I'm saying? But look at it. You will say two to three years. Before you start having meetings, before you drive the thing up, and you're doing all of this, time will catch up. Where they are doing it is an achieving result. It's not about two, three years. It's not even five years. It's not even 10 years. Okay. In other countries where they do it, they even go further. After doing what the president has done, I commend him for that because they are always afraid to do it, but he has done it. Mm -hmm. But that's just a first step. There are several other steps. If what he wants, we materialize. One of it will be 
group this, you know, we have over 100, you know, pharma companies in Nigeria. Then how do you have them? The big ones, the ones that if you can do this, you get these grants. Don't give them loans. If they go to the banks with this interest rate you are seeing, they, it means that what you expect them to deliver will still not happen. Mm. You understand my point? Then after that, you give them another target. Those of you who have the capacity and products to, you know, for export, if you do this, you get this. So look at China. Look at India. Some of them have been doing it for 40, 50, 60 years, not two years, three years. You think we should, the, the federal government needs to tweak that? Extensive. It, the one they just did, commendable, but cannot deliver mm. the expectation we want. Okay. For them, for it to deliver. So when you listen to the operators, they know the problems. The government doesn't know it all. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes it looks like the government is not ready to do the right thing. No. They really want good things to happen, but most times they don't know it all. So when you interface with the operators, that one that I just mentioned, the farmer sector or something, you know, it will work when you do other things, and the results will be there for everybody to see. All right. Um, Adeoye, now that Dangote has spoken, what do you expect of the federal government? The federal government needs to, first of all, realize that if you want to take a major decision, you have to look at the consequences on every sphere of the economy of the country. The CBN should also realize that it does not command the highest wisdom. It does not have monopoly of knowledge. Decisions that are taken at the CBN are because the Apex Bank. But you need to do a lot of research. You need to do a lot of consultation. You don't just come with a policy that because you are CBN, mm -hmm. and then it must be you know, you, you, need, you need a wide... But it doesn't look like this new, uh, I mean, this new CBN we have takes decisions on its own. Yes. And I want to believe it's... But, but the CBN can do more in terms of broader consultation. If you are increasing um, interest rate, it's going to favor some people. People who are lending money, who are rich, who are giving out money. But it means that those who are poor want to borrow money, we need to pay more interest. And that means that it's going to affect their profit. That's the, just the simple logic. So you must be able to create a window for certain categories of interest to be able to borrow money without paying this cutthroat interest rate that the CBN is insisting on. So I think that is the need for, especially at this critical moment, that we need everybody to come up with its own ideas in order to be able to move the country forward. So I think the CBN needs to consult more, especially even with the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, you know, the stock exchange, so that when you want to take decision, at least people will have been informed earlier that they were also, they made input to the decision you are taking. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The calls for major reforms in Nigeria's elect electoral process for better outcomes persist. The latest is coming from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, based on the